In a previous video, I went through the process of installing S-Video output and a 10 MHz overclock with toggle into a Sega Genesis Model 1. Today we'll be taking a more focused look on the components and circuits that make up those mods. We're going to start with the S-Video circuit. If you're just looking for overclock information, you can jump to the timestamp here. The S-Video circuit is very simple to build. In order to build it properly, you're going to need one 220 microfarad 10 volt capacitor, one 2N3904 transistor, one 75 ohm resistor, and one 27 ohm resistor. I also prefer to build on a circuit board, so I'll be starting with that. Our circuit input lines will be pulling Luma signal and Chroma signal from the Sony chip on the motherboard. When viewing the chip on the motherboard, each corner is labeled with the number that corresponds to the pin on the chip. This makes it very simple to find the right legs on the chip that we will need. Luma is pulled through pin 16 on the Sony chip. It is then amplified through the 2N3904 transistor and 27 ohm resistor. Chroma signal is pulled from pin 15 on the Sony chip. It is then stabilized by being fed through the 220 microfarad capacitor and 75 ohm resistor. In addition, our 3904 transistor will need 5 volts of power to run. This gives us 3 inputs and 2 outputs on our circuit. When building the circuit, I always start by mocking up where my components will sit. I route input wires to one side of the board and output wires to the other. I also prefer to keep signal paths with consistent wire colors. I use red for power, white for chroma, black for Luma. For reference, I have built this simple diagram. I will be leaving a copy of it in the description to work from. After mapping out where each component goes, connecting their leads, soldering them into place, we now have a complete circuit that can be used to complete the mod. Our black Luma line will be soldered directly to the top right pin of our S-Video connector. Our white chroma line will be soldered directly to the top left pin of our S-Video connector. The final two pins on the S-Video connector will be tied to ground. Next up, let's discuss the overclock mod. Overclocking is achieved by replacing signal from the stock oscillator to the processor with signal from a faster clocked oscillator of our choosing. In our case, we use our Fox 4 pin 10 MHz oscillator that's faster than our stock 7.68 MHz onboard oscillator. In many cases, this helps graphically taxing games run smoother. In some cases, however, running games in overclock mode can cause glitches or freezes. This is why it's always important to wire in an on-on toggle switch. So in cases that the overclock causes glitches, the toggle switch can be flipped and the original settings are reset. One thing to note is that I have tested a range of clock speeds and had the best luck with the 10 MHz oscillator. Some people have reported games running at higher clock speeds, but your mileage may vary. Wiring up the oscillator is very simple. Taking a top-down look at the oscillator, we can see we'll need 5 volts in, a solid ground connection, and an output lead to our toggle switch. To identify the right pin when wiring, locate the sharp corner for reference. When mounting my oscillator, I use orange wire for power, brown for ground, and red for toggle lead. As usual, I route all my wires to the right side of the board for good cable management. When I wire up the oscillator, I pull ground and power from C65 to get my 5 volts. The toggle lead is then soldered to the bottom pin on the toggle switch. We then locate pin 15 on the processor chip. Leg 15 is heated and lifted from the board carefully, bent back, and trimmed. One lead is soldered from the motherboard through hole to the top pin of the toggle switch. And the final lead is soldered from leg 15 of the processor to the middle pin of the toggle switch. One thing to keep in mind is the shorter the leads to the toggle switch, the better. Some people reported best results with 2 inch or shorter runs. Now that the toggle switch is complete, it can be mounted into place. For more information on the complete install, check out my other video if you haven't already. I hope this helped if you're looking into completing this mod, and check the description for all the information we've covered. Keep checking back on my page for more mods and repairs, and a like and subscribe are always appreciated. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you guys later.